Hi boys and girls! Today we're going to learn how to make our writing even more interesting. Remember, I always tell you, show me with your writing, don't tell me. And one way to do that is to use powerful verbs. Remember last week we talked about said and how said is a boring word and there's so many other ways to use the word said in our dialogue. Well, today we're going to talk about some other verbs that are powerful. So what is a verb, boys and girls? Do you remember? A sentence can only be a sentence if it has a subject and it has a verb. A subject is a noun, someone or something that is doing something. So a verb is a doing, being or action word. Can you spot the verbs or the action words or the being words in this sentence? The wolf walked into the woods. How about this sentence? He followed the path as he strolled towards the straw cottage. How about this sentence? When he reached the old rickety door, he tapped it and waited. Did you catch the verbs in those sentences? Walked. The wolf walked into the woods. He followed the path as he strolled towards the straw cottage. When he reached the old rickety door, he tapped it and waited. If you caught those, give yourself a big round of applause. Okay, so let's get to boring verbs. When we're writing, remember we want to show with our writing. We want the reader to paint a picture in their head just to try and imagine what we are seeing as we write our stories. So when you write with some interesting verbs, you can give the reader a lovely idea of what you're seeing in your head. So verbs that are interesting and not boring can paint a wonderful picture and they can give you more information than you're actually writing down. And it just makes your writing more exciting. So take a look at this, quest, this sentence. One day Goldilocks walked through the forest. Hmm, so a simple sentence, right? Can you improve on it? Can you change that verb so that we can get an idea of Goldilocks's mood? How about one day Goldilocks skipped through the forest? Well now I get an idea that Goldilocks is happy. Even though the sentence didn't say she was happy, I know that people usually skip when they're happy. So when it says one day Goldilocks skipped through the forest, I get the idea that she's happy. See? Showing, not telling. One day Goldilocks strolled through the forest. That tells me that she's feeling very relaxed because usually you stroll when you're kind of relaxed, looking forward to a nice walk, or wandered, another way to show that she's just walking through the forest, enjoying herself. But it's not saying that she's relaxed or happy, but I can guess, I can infer from those juicy verbs. All right, your turn. How about this one? Can you make this sentence better? Cinderella put the lettuce into the bag. That doesn't tell me anything about Cinderella's mood. It doesn't tell me anything about if she's having trouble. How about if I change the verb to drop the lettuce into the bag or stowed the lettuce into the bag or forced? Mm, that's getting even better because now I'm getting an idea that Maybe the lettuce was too small for the, or too big for the bag, and so she had to force it. Or maybe Cinderella is angry and she shoved the lettuce in the bag. Or maybe she's hiding the lettuce because she is hungry, so she hid the lettuce in the bag. Do you see how all these verbs can change the meaning of the sentence, and it's showing me, not telling me? All right, your turn. I want you to think about it. And I want you to think of a really good, strong verb to show action, to show the reader, not tell the reader. Okay, so this is from Jack and the Beanstalk, and he has some beans and he's throwing them out the window. But throw is a boring word, through is boring. So what other words could you use? How about catapulted, launched, heaved, hurled, propelled, tossed, lobbed. Those are all fantastic ways to show that Jack threw the beans out of the window with lots of force. 
I really like catapulted. And you see how you don't need to use the word throw because there's so many other synonyms, juicier words, powerful verbs for throw instead of throw. How about this sentence? Ah, oh, we're talking about a hideous witch. So let's come up with some juicy verbs, some powerful verbs that go with that, with that picture of that hideous witch. The hideous witch fell to the ground. Eh, I see her falling to the ground in my eye, my mind's eye, and I see her really racing to the ground. So instead of fell, what could we say? She hurtled to the ground. She plummeted to the ground. She crashed to the ground. These are all words that you could use instead of fell. Do you see how powerful verbs can change the picture in your mind? All right, here's Little Red Riding Hood. She's going in the forest and she's walking bravely in the forest. Well, remember Cinderella skipped in the forest because she was happy. But bravely, that tells me something about the forest. Maybe the forest is scary. So walked is kind of boring. What can we replace walked with? Stomped, marched, hiked, stormed, pounded, advanced, charged, headed, strode, red riding hood, marched bravely into the forest. How about this one? Goldilocks ate the bowl of porridge. Hmm, boring. How did she eat it? Was the porridge good? Can I change the verb in the sentence to give me an idea of how good the porridge was without saying the porridge was good? Sure I can. I can change the verb. Ate. Gobbled. Oh, that tells me that the porridge was good or maybe she's really hungry. Nibbled. Hmm, she wasn't that hungry or maybe it wasn't that good. Ingested. Eh, that's kind of a interesting word. I don't know if I'd necessarily use that one. Devoured. Yes, she loved that porridge and she devoured it. Scoffed the porridge. Wolfed it down. Feasted on the porridge. Gorged on the porridge. Munched on the porridge. Do you see how you don't need to use a boring word like ate? There's so many synonyms for ate to show eating. And it shows us the person's mood as they eat, or maybe shows us how delicious the food was instead of just using the word eat. Okay, it's your turn now. In Google Classroom, I've given you this assignment and you're going to rewrite this sentence, but instead of using the verbs that are there, you're going to use some other powerful verbs. And there's some here down at the bottom that you could use instead. So let's read this sentence together very quickly. And then in Google Classroom, you're going to open up the assignment and you're going to redo this, sent this paragraph with juicier verbs. So, the morning had finally arrived. Arrived is a verb. Jack woke before sunrise and went to the window. Woke is a verb and went is a verb. Went is kind of boring. There was a beanstalk. He quickly washed his face, put on his clothes and put on his shoes. Put on, hmm, put on, kind of boring, right? Before running outside. Running is a good verb, but I bet you could make a juicier, more powerful word work in this sentence. He stood at the bottom of the colossal beanstalk, looking up with wonder. Okay, looking is another verb, but I bet you could come up with a juicier verb to really show me how was he looking. All right, boys and girls, head over to Google Classroom and complete the assignment. I can't wait to see what you write.